Good, uh, I'll make a start. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce, introduce uh, Stefan Siegel from the University of Augsburg. We, we had a plan for him to visit Edinburgh uh, as part of the, the research and the PhD work he's doing. Uh, but of course that didn't happen. So we had some lovely conversations uh, online. Um, and I also thought it would be a, a really good idea to uh, to have Stefan and give a talk on the things he's working on and is interested in. So that's what we've planned for this afternoon. Um, we have 19 minutes, so Stefan will talk for 40, 45 minutes, and that gives us plenty of time to, to get into a conversation. Um, and it's nice to see colleagues from Edinburgh and also some German names where I might assume, but I may be completely wrong here, that some of you may be uh, sitting abroad. But very welcome everyone to uh, Edinburgh, Moray House School of Education and Sport. So over to you, Stefan. Well, thank you, Gerd, for the invitation and the introduction. And a warm welcome to everyone. I'm glad that there are so many people from the UK as well as from Germany. Um, I'm thrilled to present you some ideas that I'm currently working on and would be pleased to discuss them with you. So let me just share my slides with you. Here we go. I think you should be able to see them by now, right? Almost, yeah, there it is. Perfect. So um, to make this webinar somewhat interactive, I've prepared a short survey for you. Um, it's anonymous, it has only four questions. I'll post you the link in the chat box. And um, yeah, here we go. Um, feel free to take part in it. Um, once you've participated, we'll be looking at the results. Does the link work? Wonderful. Okay. And um, don't overthink the questions, um, just answer spontaneous. Okay, we've already got one response, three responses. Okay, maybe a couple of more seconds and then we'll look at the results. It's a bit of a selfish questionnaire. Um, I want to get to know you a little bit better before we start. Okay, um, let's see. Would you consider education to be an interdisciplinary field of study, a discipline in its own right? Interesting, okay. Most of you would consider it an interdisciplinary field of study. Um, would you consider education to be a rather weak field of study or a strong field of study or haven't thought about that? Okay, most of you think that um, it's rather a strong field of study. Would you consider the term educational theories to be rather um, ill-defined or well-defined? Okay, <laughs> that's good. Um, could you spontaneously name an example for an educational theory? Child-centeredness, meiotics, my own work, pedagogical content knowledge? No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you um, for that brief um, insight. Um, let's go back to the slides. Here we go. Okay, um, before I'm going to reveal to you the problem of educational theory, 
I'd like to tell you a little bit more about my academic background because I think it's um, important for you to know where I'm at home for this talk. Um, I studied educational science as a subject on its own um, at the University of Augsburg. I did uh, my bachelor's and my master's degree and currently I work there um, at the, in the department of educational science as a researcher, lecturer and coordinator. Um, our main areas of research are educational theory, educational media and the philosophy and the history of educational science. In terms of research mythology, we use a wide range of um, approaches from hermeneutics where the focus lies to also empirical methods. methods. And one of our central aims is to provide students um, with well-founded insights into the central educational concepts, questions and theories, and also to enable them to develop an identity as an educationalist. Um, I'm, why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because the folk here of my department described me pretty well as an educationalist. I consider my work mainly to be in the um, tradition of Geisteswissenschaftliche Pädagogik. Um, however, I also use quite frequently empirical methods, both qualitative and quantitative methods. Um, so for instance, in my doctoral thesis, I conducted a mixed method study. Um, in this project, um, which in fact consists of multiple studies. I'm keen on finding out what students and lecturers of educational studies and teacher training um, think about educational theories, how they evaluate them, and to what extent they deal with them. Um, if you're interested in it, there's already a preprint available for this uh, first study. Um, the manu manuscript is currently under review again. Mm -hmm. So as educational theory is probably the key concept of my thesis and because it is important to me that my studies are based on a solid or strong th theoretical foundation, I'm keen on finding out what they are. Um, similar to the La Sagrada Familia in Barcelona, this is still work in progress, although I'm not sure if the question of what educational theories are will be answered quickly and in an adequate manner, I nevertheless plan to hand it in um, this year. So, okay, what's the purpose of this talk? Um, within this talk, I'd like to point to current developments, threatening the disciplinary heart of education. I argue that there uh, are distinctively educational forms of theory based on this promise. I discuss why it is challenging to define what educational theories are. Um, with educational theories, I mean Erziehungswissenschaftliche Theorien. Um, however, why it is a rewarding endeavor. My talk is organized as follows. Firstly, I'd like to contrast two constructions of the academic study of education um, to remind us that academic disciplines are socio-historic constructs. Secondly, I'd like to share you some observations about, share with you some observations about German educational science and shed light on current developments that I find quite concerning. Based on this, um, we'll look at two main challenges when defining educational theories. After pointing out some potentials of defining that term, I will propose two working definitions and outline their benefits as well as their shortcomings. Um, and finally, I will summarize the main points of the webinar and draw a conclusion which hopefully leads us to a lively discussion. Um, feel free to ask smaller questions as we go along. If you have any bigger ones, I'd be happy to answer them at the end. Um, I've, pre I've, prefer I've prepared uh, another thing for you, um, which is a question and feedback Google Docs. Um, feel free to write down any question you'd like to discuss after pr the presentation. And if you have any suggestion for me and my work, um, you can also note them there. Um, I will post the link again in the chat box. Ah, I see. Stefan, fun fact, my mother's maiden name was Siegel. Thanks. That's funny. What a coincidence. Okay, um, so feel free to note anything down there. Let's start with the first point. Um, theorizing education, a transatlantic perspective. Um, although thinking about pedagogical questions has presumably always been a part of the human genre and goes back at least to Greek antiquity, um, the academic study of education was established much later. Um, a transatlantic perspective on theorizing education shows 
that the academic study of educational phenomena has developed quite differently within various contexts. Um, especially when you look at the Anglo-American tradition, um, which is probably more familiar to the UK people here, um, education is conceived as an interdisciplinary field of study, which draws, um, for instance, its theories from contributing or um, fundamental disciplines, such as psychology or sociology. Um, educational theories are consequently an umbrella term for theories from different disciplines, that deal more or less with the um, phenom phenomenon of education. One problem is here that these contributing disciplines ask, for instance, psychological or sociological questions. However, they do not ask truly educational questions in general. Um, in some non-English speaking countries, such as Germany and Finland, however, the academic study of educational processes and practices is assigned to a scientific in it, a discipline in its own right. Educational science, um, which is often um, synonymously referred to as pedagogic. Um, in this continental construction, disciplines such as psychology and philosophy are conceived as adjacent disciplines. Um, they do play an important role. Um, however, they're um, separate. Um, when educational science is understood as a relatively autonomous discipline, it should be characterized by a distinctive interest, distinctive questions, and truly or genuine theories. Okay, in sum, this uh, transatlantic perspective shows us that there are different traditions of theorizing education um, that manifest themselves in different socio-historic constructions of the academic study of education. I briefly characterized um, these ideal types and pointed to significant differences. If you're interested in a far more detailed comparison of uh, these constructions, I can highly recommend Gerd's article from uh, 2011, for instance. Okay, um, academic disciplines. What constitutes an academic discipline? Um, an academic discipline or field of study is a branch of knowledge that is taught and researched as a part of higher education. Um, although there are different classifications, academic disciplines are conventionally divided into humanities, the natural sciences and the social sciences. Um, disciplines vary between well-established ones and evolving ones. Um, a valuable distinction for looking closer at a certain discipline is the distinction between a discipline's primary and its secondary characteristics. Um, Primary characteristics are, for instance, particular objects of research that are sometimes shared with other disciplines, um, then theories and concepts, and for instance, um, specific terminologies. Secondary characteristics instead would be institutional uh, manifestations, for instance, in the form of subjects thought at university, academic departments, conferences, journals, and so on. Um, before I'm going to tell you a little bit uh, more about German educational science, um, what is your guess? Um, where would you put German educational science? A, B, C, D? Just put your answer in the chat box um, regarding its secondary and primary characteristics. Where would you put it? Well, <laughs> nobody has seen that. Here we go. First answers are arriving. B, D. I shall assume C, B. <laughs> okay. Or A. C, D, A. Okay. Um, I would put it in A. It has a strong character. Um, German educational science has in my um, understanding or in my view, um, strong secondary characteristics, however, um, weak primary characteristics. And that's a problem because um, the primary characteristics could be considered as the disciplinary heart of a discipline. Um, okay, let's move on. German educational science. To set the context, um, I would like to briefly characterize education, German educational science compared to other disciplines such as medicine or philosophy. Um, educational science is a rather young one. Um, in 1779, Ernst Christian Trapp became the first professor for education or pedagogic in Halle 
Um, but only much later, after several attempts and failures, the discipline could establish itself as a relatively autonomous discipline in the 1920s. Um, since then, it has expanded um, drastically. Processes of differentiation and specialization have led to a plurality of um, subdisciplines, um, theories, concepts, etc., etc. Um, since educational science has its roots in philosophy, um, the former was assigned to the humanities until the 1960s. Then with the methodological or the so-called realistic turn, a lot more educationalists started using empirical methods and especially since the year 2000 with the upcoming of these large-scale assessments such as PISA, um, quantitative research is gaining strongly in importance. Um, plurality is a term that characterizes the discipline pretty well. Um, this becomes clear by just looking at the name of the discipline. There's not just one uh, name, but many. Um, Pädagogik, Erziehungswissenschaft, Erziehungswissenschaften, Bildungswissenschaft, Bildungswissenschaften, and also um, empirical educational research or empirische Bildungsforschung as a new interdisciplinary field. Um, I don't think that um, many other disciplines have so many names for their field. Um, sometimes these are used synonymously and sometimes um, st uh, strongly differentiated from another. Okay, but we have also a great plurality and also controversies concerning the discipline's research methods, its research objects, its subdisciplines and specializations, and its method theories or paradigms. I just listed a couple of those as examples. Um, if we just look at the secondary characteristics, educational science is a very successful discipli discipline in Germany. However, if we focus on the primary characteristics, um, the problem of educational theory is revealed. Okay, in fact, there is not only one problem, but several problems. Let's have a look at some of that, of some of them that concern me. Um, although scientists and policy policymakers frequently refer to educational theories when discussing learning and instruction, they scarcely define this term. And although educational theories can be considered to be a native concept, with Herbert speaking, or a primary characteristic of educational science, the term is um, neglected in literature and educational discourses. Um, Zedler, for instance, says, a um, German educationalist, that dealing with the term educational theories that not, does not seem to be one of the disciplinary core topics at the moment. Um, besides, you won't find a definition in, for instance, a German study book. Um, secondly, with Lenzen and also with Vogel, two German educational scientists, it can be stated there is currently no consensus on the fundamental concepts and methods of educational science, and even less on a fundamental canon of theories about what educational theories are and which of them should be an essential part of study programs. I think this is quite surprising as the term educational theories is or at least should be a fundamental one within educational research. Um, when I started the literature research for my doctoral thesis, I found several English books um, about educational theories and was immediately a little bit jealous. Uh, jealous. Um, for instance, the Handbook of, of Educational Theories here was published by Irby et al. in um, 2013 and has over a thousand pages and contains over 100 theories. Um, the volume is valuable as it makes many influential and frequently consulted theories accessible to students and lecturers in Anglo-American countries. Um, however, reading the handbook for my doctoral thesis, I noted um, that it contained theories I would not identify as genuinely educational. As far as I know, there is no such handbook in the German speaking world so far. Um, there are, however, some introductory works with less stylish, uh, stylish covers, of course, um, that have very promising titles. Um, here are two examples. Um, theories of Educational Science from König and Zedler or Introduction into the Theories and Methods of Educational Science. Um, these titles sound promising, right? 
Um, well, at a closer look, if you wanted to find a list or a description of important educational theories in these books, you might be slightly disappointed. Um, of course, there are educational theories in these books. However, I consider them as meta theories or paradigms such as Geisteswissenschaftliche Pädagogik and not object theories. Um, additionally, you won't find an entry for the compositum at Erziehungswissenschaftliche Theorien in disciplinary lexicons or, or encyclo encyclopedias. Um, in sum, it can be stated that the term educational theory is not that well defined currently. Um, there's virtually no discourse about the question of what educational theories are, but I think it is an important and even existential question for education of science as an academic discipline. And with this, I would argue that a primary key characteristic of the discipline is neglected. Firstly, that makes it difficult to evaluate uh, one's own theory production or the discipline's own theory production, because it's not so easy to define what are genuinely educational theories and terms and which are borrowed or imported from adjacent disciplines. This makes it difficult to systematize educational theories which makes it difficult for, for instance, students and lecturers to deal with these theories, um, which in the end might lead to a weak disciplinary reproduction. Um, here's a short disclaimer. Um, this might be also true for other disciplines. Um, why is it so? Although there are many reasons why it's not a trivial task to define the term educational theories, I'll focus on two major challenges. A first challenge is, is that there are different understandings of the terms that feed um, the term educational theories. Depending on different schools of thought and or different epistemic positions, the answers on what theories, what a theory is and what education is um, differ. So educationalists and policymakers frequent, frequently refer to educational theories However, they scarcely disclose their understanding. The word has um, its roots in ancient Greek, but in modern use, it has taken on several related meanings. In a reductive everyday understanding, a theory is often described as the opposite of practice um, or real life. Um, in academia, there are different understandings um, of the term theory. Probably the wider educational research community would agree that a theory is um, a type of abstract or generalizing thinking about a phenomenon. Although there are controversies, a lot of researchers would probably agree that a theory is a set of well substantiated assertions about a part of reality. Um, there is no doubt um, that theories play an important role and in research and practice. Theories fulfill uh, various functions. They can be used, for instance, to describe, predict, understand, justify, analyze a certain phenomenon and so on. Um, consequently, they can be considered very important um, for theory and research on the one hand and practice on the other, uh, on the other hand. Yet there are um, differences um, in the differences in disciplines regarding to what extent they develop um, genuine theories and also to what extent they explicitly name their theories. I would say educational science is here quite weak, whereas for instance, psychology is nowadays uh, rather strong regarding these two points. Okay, what is education? Um, moving on to the next term. In the English language, there's only the single word education. In German, um, we have at least two words to talk about education, Erziehung und Bildung. I'm going to focus on Erziehung now. According to Schleiermacher, um, everybody knows what education is. Um, this everyday understanding is however different from a scientific understanding. Currently, the term ed education or Erziehung is neglected by many educationalists and or marginalized and there is also a conceptual confusion. Um, Ritzinka pointed already to this problem in 1975. Um, for instance, 
should education be considered as a product or a process? Um, should a definition of education be rather descriptive or rather normative? There are a lot of unanswered questions and controversies in the field. Um, probably the most thing, probably most educational think, um, educationalists think that education is a process where someone learns something for a reason from someone. Um, education requires accordingly a pedagogical relationship where a teacher says, look, there is something there I believe might be good, important, worthwhile for you to pay attention to. Um, Yester also stated this in an article from 2017. Um, several theories highlight that education happens when this gesture of showing on the one hand and learning come together, for instance, Prange or Simkel. In other words, um, when articulation bridges that gap between teaching and learning, also called the pedagogical difference. Um, one important aspect of education is often forgotten. Um, it is the technology deficit. Um, there's a nice saying in, um, in, in the English language, which I um, currently found out, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. I, I really like that. Um, so all of that makes it hard to theorize education. Okay. Um, the second, and in my opinion, the biggest challenge, however, is to find out what the defining characteristics of educational theories or Erziehungswissenschaftliche Theorien are, um, by which they can be distinguished from theories of other disciplines. In my understanding, um, the objects studied, the theorists who, do well, who develop these theories, or the methods that are used are not or only partly helpful criteria. If you look at the research methods, for instance, they are not, not a suitable defining characteristic um, since educational scientists share um, their hermeneutical methods with other humanities and their empirical methods with other social sciences. Um, defining educational theories by specific research objects or basic concepts, as for instance, Hirdeis and Hooke would do, um, is, only, is also only partly useful in my view because neighboring disciplines sometimes share the uh, research objects. So researching the phenomenon of education is a necessary but not a sufficient condition to be able to speak of an educational theory. Um, while the aspects mentioned so far, methods, theorists and objects are only partly suitable to distinguish educational theories from theories of other disciplines, um, the decisive criterion in my view is the genuine perspective or the interest or the question that has to be truly educational. Okay, why is it now worthwhile to define the term educational theories? It's probably not a um, epochal key problem, epochal typisches Schlüsselproblem, as Klafki would say, um, but I think there are many reasons um, that support the endeavor of defining this term. Um, due to time constraints, I only look at two important ones. Well, apart from the immediate necessity to define the term for my research project, um, a definition could be beneficial for educational discourses. When educationalists talk about these theories, they should be able to disclose their understanding, um, at least when they're asked to do so. Um, only if the participants of a scientific discourse can disclose to each other what specific terms mean, um, yeah, there, the exchange of thoughts and ideas can succeed without or at least with fewer misunderstandings. So the absence of a definition might cause miscommunication in the worst case. Um, secondly, it might be rewarding for educational scientists to, de to define this term precisely as this could strengthen the relative autonomy of this discipline. Um, a precise definition of the term could help to sharpen this native concept. Um, this in turn would allow um, educational science to better observe, describe and advance its disciplinary formation of theories, development of theories, for example, um, and to recognize um, when they are importing theories from um, neighboring disciplines. Um, overall, this basic theoretical work, um, which could key 
which could be considered a form of disciplinary boundary work and um, could contribute to strengthening the disciplinary identity of education of science. So what I've just said indicates why it is an important task for individual educationalists as well as for educational science as a discipline as a whole to define the term educational theories. Um, having you given a brief outline of the challenges and potentials of defining this term, we can now look at possible solutions. Um, here we go. Um, I've spoken so much about educational theories in this talk, but I still owe you a definition. And we're getting there. Um, we're slowly getting there. Before disclosing my understanding, I'd briefly like to address one more question. What constitutes a good definition? Um, for essential definitions, which are a type of intentional definitions, there are various quality criteria. Ideally, a definition should be free from any bias. Secondly, it should not be too limited, narrow, or exclusive. So a definition that leaves out major educational theories, for instance, um, or that only fits a very small subset of them is neither useful nor accurate. Thirdly, it should um, avoid being the opposite, um, being too broad, too generic, inclusive, um, allowing things not ordinarily considered educational theory to be included, such as, for instance, sociological theories. Additionally, it should be comprehensive, precise, short, and clear, and it should con not contain logical contradictions or circular formulations. While um, formulating the working definitions, I try to take these um, criteria into account. Um, by developing two um, preliminary definitions, my main ambition is to introduce a distinction between genuinely educational theories on the one hand and or in a narrow sense and educationally relevant um, theories or educational theories in a wider sense on the other hand. Okay, let's have a lo closer look at what I mean by that. Um, truly educational theories or educational theories in a narrow sense are systems or sets of statements that are usually obtained by educationalists, ideally using established research methods, which have an educational question as a starting point and which relate to educational phenomena and help to understand, describe, explain, predict, and modify them. Um, accordingly, uh, scientific object theories fall under this definition, but pedagogical everyday theories do not. Um, educational theories in a narrow sense are primarily theories of erziehung or education. So truly educational theories differ from theories of other disciplines by their genuinely or by genuinely educational questions as a starting point, as I said. Um, an example would be Sünkel's general theory of education. He aims to identify the fundamental structure of education. In other words, he wants to know what education is, what it always has been and always will be, what task it has to, uh, has to fulfill in human life. Um, defining and reflecting on genuinely educational issues is ne necessary and helpful to distinguish the um, indigenous um, theories of the field of educational science. Um, let's move on to educational theories in a wider sense. Uh, I would define educational theories in a wider sense, which actually should rather be called educationally relevant theories as follows. Educationally Theories in the wider sense are sets of statements usually obtained by researchers using established methods, so nothing new here, that relate to educational phenomena in the wider sense and help to understand, describe, explain and predict, modify them, etc. What's missing here is this genuine um, educational perspective. This definition includes, for instance, also psychology, uh, psychological theories, um, for instance, social learning theory, um, according to Bandura, or self-determination theory, according to DC and Ryan. But um, these theories are important um, for explaining certain educational phenomena. However, they are borrowed or important, imported from neighboring disciplines. 
Um, this broad definition is intended to account for the fact that these theories can be of great importance for educational research and practice. However, they're not truly educational. Um, so let's compare these um, two working definitions. Um, the advantages of a narrow definitions, definition are that it can have a disciplinary limiting and identity forming effect for educationalists and educational science. One danger um, of this definition is, especially regarding the plurality of German educational science, that it could be perceived by some educationalists as reductive, too limited, biased, and consequently not adequate. Um, when we look at the broad definition, um, which I, with which I accompany that um, narrow definition, one advantage is um, that it enables us to better capture the presumably very different understandings of students and faculty or staff um, of educational science and teacher education programs. Another advantage is that it's more inclusive and it's probably more compatible to the Anglo-American tradition of theorizing education. Um, a major danger, however, is that the term educational theories is used too broadly and it might degenerate into a meaningless container word or a substrate category, as Tannard, Tannard or Lenson would say, that subsumes many things which can be interpreted, uh, interpreted in different ways. And it may, may therefore um, no longer be adequate to the subject matter. So it might lead to blurred um, boundaries um, between disciplines uh, or theories from different fields. All in all, I don't think that these definitions are already adequate, but they will help me in my doctoral thesis. And besides, I hope that they stimulate um, the educational discourse um, on the question of what educational theories are and what their characteristics are. Both working definitions are to be understood as aids. Um, on the one hand, to better understand the research in the context of the thesis. And on the other hand, to be able to communicate more clearly to, um, in discourses of educational science. By differentiating between educational theories in a narrow sense and in a broad sense, however, it should be made clear at the same time that the latter one are not genuinely educational theories. That brings me already to the end of my presentation. Let me just briefly run over the key points again. Um, you now know that the academic study of educational phenomena has developed quite differently within various contexts and that there are an Anglo-American construction and the continental construction of the field. You are now aware of the fact that educational theories is often referred to, but a rather ill-defined term, at least in German educational science. Um, I also pointed to some issues that make it hard to define that term, such as unclear terms and the lack of distinctive criteria that make it challenging to define this term. Additionally, you've heard that an adequate definition could bring some clarity into the educational discourses and by this um, also strengthen the disciplinary identity or the heart of the discipline. So in conclusion, um, we see that defining educational theories is a quite challenging but also rewarding endeavor um, which could benefit individual educationalists as well as the discipline as a whole, but maybe also other disciplines. I'm showing you the La Sagrada Familia again. I think all in all, it's better having a preliminary definition that might turn out to be wrong than having none at all. With um, accurate and adequate definitions, we can make stronger and clearer statements and arguments in our discussions. Um, if educational science want to be, wants to be successful in the long run, in my view, um, educational scientists should push the development of their own theories. In that way, it could solve the problem of educational theory and reduce the risk of being undermined and occupied by other disciplines. Um, but this is still work in progress. Um, so let me just add one comment to contextualize um, everything that has been said. All that was said might give educational science a bad name or shed a negative light on this discipline. 
However, you should know that educational science is indeed a very, very successful discipline. If you look at its secondary characteristics, um, such as third party funded projects, journals, etc. Um, but educational, German educational science could do better at developing genuine theories rather than uncritically importing theories from other disciplines. Besides, you should keep in mind that a lot of these observations probably might be true for uh, many other disciplines as well. Um, in my view, a lot of disciplines often don't ask these questions or take them for granted or can um, more easily duck them. Um, I'd like to close with um, a quote from Goethe's um, 2016 text, Who's Afraid of Teaching, um, where he elaborates on the distinction between Erziehung and Bildung. Um, while I do agree that there is always a danger in trying to pin things down, and even more so in claiming triumphantly that one has been able to pin something down def uh, definitively, there is also a danger in the opposite gesture, that is, in the refusal to say anything at all, other than the thing, but then why a thing, is a mystery. Here Derrida's notion of transcendental violence remains helpful in my view, that is, the observation that each time we name something, we never get it completely right, and therefore do violence to the very thing we seek to name. But at the very same time, this naming is a condition of possibility for the thing to be in shared existence at all. Even so, I wish to add, if only as a phenomenon. I think this was quite fitting and yeah. I hope, uh, here are my references. Um, and now I hope that I can drastically reduce my talking time now and start a conversation with you. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and maybe learned something new. So now it's over to you and any questions you might have. Thanks. Okay, fantastic. Thanks very much. <coughs> that's very scary, perfect timing. So that's good. <laughs>